Hi. Welcome to Drinking the Kool-Aid. Welcome. I'm Megan. I'm Hannah. Listen. What? I think that we're just going to have to start a whole corrections thing at the beginning of every podcast because I feel like that's all I do now. (laughs) (laughs) And this has been brought to you by Megan's Corrections. Oh, uh, yeah, we might have to find something fancy to call it. Dude, that was cueing you to give the correction, man. Okay, here it is. Jeez. So, uh, when we were doing our Dolly podcast, I don't even know how I didn't catch myself. Uh, when I was editing it, I could hear me talking about, uh, one of the people that was, like, Dolly's lovers, and I kept flipping back and forth between Ray and Roy. What? Yeah. I straight up had no idea you did that. I did not notice. So I was like, I'm editing and I'm like, why do I keep saying that? Uh, Well, hopefully nobody else noticed either. Well, you know what? Even if you did, that's it. That's all I'm going to say about it. (laughs) I'm not even really sorry. (laughs) I just. I had no idea you did that. Yeah. I like legitimately <laughs> had zero clue. I didn't even hear it. Yeah. Wow. I must have been too into the story. I was <sighs> just like, well, that's fun. <laughs> it, what did you say? Roy and Roy and Roy Ray. And Ray? Mm-hmm. No, I had no clue. I didn't talk about him for long anyways, but there it is. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess we'll just do a different story then today. <laughs> right. And the, the name Ray or Roy is not in here, correct? Correct. Well, then we're good. Yay! <laughs> uh, no, this one has way tougher names. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, this will be fun. Yes. <laughs> uh, yep. Lots of Googling and... Trying to figure out how you say things. I really hope that doesn't mean that you're going to add an accent to everything. Well, I guess we'll just find out, won't well, we? I'm sure we will. Okay. Uh, so we're doing a story of survival today. Ooh. And it's the case of Elizabeth Smart. Honestly, I am, I've been so, so stoked for this one. We had talked about maybe covering it. And I am, I'm like really, really excited about this one because, you know, for a lot of people, um, like Jacob Wetterling was that case that they grew up with. That was for me. But that was like real close to the year I was actually born. So like I didn't, I was a little bit too young, but for this case specifically, this was the one I remember super like vivid in my mind since I was a kid. So I'm I'm actually really excited for this one. I'm going to be pumped to tell this story and to see what things you remember and, like, had no clue about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will say that I didn't know a lot about this one. I knew the gist of the story, but I was actually surprised by a lot of the details. And that, yeah, I'm excited to see what you have found because this one I actually know a decent amount about. I've done a lot of research on this one. Yeah. So I'm really stoked to see what you have that I didn't know about. And I got almost all of my research actually straight from Elizabeth's book. Okay. And I love that. Um, it Absolutely was, love that. Yeah. So it's called My Story by Elizabeth Smart. And she has more than one book that she's written, but that's the one I used. I actually, okay, cool. Yeah, I've never read them, but I'm very intrigued. (laughs) And then I didn't know, honestly, I don't know if I need to be putting trigger warnings in any of this stuff because it's true crime, but I will state that uh, it obviously has like kidnapping, abuse, rape. We won't go into details about it, but it does have that and talk about it. Um, Also, there was a lot of using, like, faith and religion to manipulate, and I don't know if that gets people riled up, but there it is. Elizabeth Ann Smart grew up in Salt Lake City. Her father, Ed Smart, was in real estate, and her mother, Lois, was a homemaker. As a child, Elizabeth was described as being kind, smart, shy, and obedient. She started playing the harp when she was five. Holy crap. And practiced for hours a day because she absolutely loved it. 
The harp is really pretty. It is so pretty, but honestly, I just cannot imagine being into something like that as a kid. No, me either. But I wish I was. Actually, I was just telling mom that uh, when I was in school, I desperately wanted to play the drums in the band, like in the school choir. Oh, did you? And they told me no. What? Yeah, I was. They said no. They never even let me try. And they said it was because they already had somebody playing the drums. Mean. Right. So then I got stuck with the clarinet, which I hated. Yeah. And then thanks to you, I got stuck with the clarinet because you had it before me. So I got the damn hand me down instrument. Well, it should have been the drums. So I'm just saying. Well, and then you took me down with you. Maybe I would have been a rock star. You don't know. <laughs> maybe. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, when she was in middle school, she was sought out to perform as a harpist at local weddings and funerals. She regularly participated in the annual fall concert at the Capitol Rotunda in Salt Lake City. Sounds fancy. Yeah, she was very skilled at horseback riding and was a distance runner who was training to compete in cross-country racing. Oh, wow. So she had it going on. In November of 2001, the Smart family went out for a shopping trip. Lois Smart was crossing the street with her two daughters, Mary Catherine and Elizabeth. It was a cold day in Salt Lake City as winter was moving in. The Smarts noticed a beggar on the street, and Lois approached the man, clutching the hands of her daughters. Her sons had already asked if they could offer the man any work, but she handed him $5 instead. Okay, I just love that, like, all of them were immediately trying to help, though. Absolutely. That is cool. Yes. And she had no idea that the man was studying her daughter during this very brief encounter. Yep. He was staring at Elizabeth and studied her eye and hair color and the clothing that she was wearing. This actually scares me so bad because I I constantly think about what, like, when I'm just, like, driving down the street or something, I'm like, did I just pass a murderer? Like, I have no idea. Is it me turning a corner in Walmart going to, like, seal my fate because somebody sees me that, you know, like, all of a sudden there's something they like? Mm -hmm. Like, that actually scares the hell out of me. Yeah, I agree. I think about that stuff all the time, too. And then I've heard different things about how um you pass like three people in your lifetime that are murderers yeah yeah i know it. i'm like have i already passed all three or are they coming what's going on yeah it's so freaky because it's just like one little simple thing that you're doing throughout your normal day could literally seal your fate and you have no idea and that's just that is a horrifying thought i know it's awful to think about uh elizabeth described herself as pretty shy at least when she was younger she was quiet and had a 4.0 GPA. She was a 14-year-old that liked to talk to her mom and jump on the trampoline with her friends. Two days prior to being taken... Sorry, a 14-year-old that liked to talk to their mom? I did. What? <laughs> oh, right. That was me. Oh, right. Yeah, but well, you never even <laughs> snuck out a fucking window, so... <laughs> Excuse me. Uh... Yes, I did. Oh, to walk into the yard. Yes, I... And then you walked back into the house. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm I was sorry. a little rebel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Total rebel. Uh, <laughs> so two days prior to being taken, Elizabeth was sitting in Sunday school, and her teacher said something that struck her. He said, quote, if you will pray to do what God wants you to do, he will change your life. If you will lose your life in the service of God, he will direct you. He will help you. So I challenge you to do that. Commit to the Heavenly Father and he will guide your way. Elizabeth didn't know how she could really serve God because she's just a young girl. But the teacher had an intensity in his voice that drew her in and it really made her think. Okay, but that's super sweet. Yes. When Elizabeth got home from Sunday school, she went up to her bedroom that she shared with her younger sister, Mary Catherine. On the other side of their bathroom, there was a walk-in closet where she could hide and just kind of be by herself sometimes. Elizabeth had five siblings, 
And it made the household kind of chaotic, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine well, that would be. A little bit. On this particular day, she wanted to accept the challenge that her teacher had given her. As Elizabeth was locked in the closet, she remembers kneeling down and praying. She basically told God that she was only 14, but would do whatever he needed her to do. Oh my God, it's so sweet. <laughs> it really is. One day prior to Elizabeth being kidnapped, she attended a funeral for her grandfather. So her family's like already dealing with all this and it's pretty traumatic. And then it just rolls right into the next yep. thing. Yep. On June 5th, 2002, Elizabeth and her sister, Mary Catherine, woke up to a man in their bedroom. He was standing over Elizabeth, holding a knife to her throat. He leaned over her and was so close that his beard was against her face. Oh, uh, nope. Isn't that nope. disgusting? Nope, 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 nope. It's nope. so cringy. And he whispered, I nope. have a knife to your neck. Don't make a sound. Nope, 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 nope. And he said, get out of bed or I'll kill you and your family. Elizabeth was trying to fully wake up and figure out what was happening, but the man repeated that he had a knife against her neck. And all she could think about was just protecting her family at this point. So she quietly got out of bed and the man grabbed her by the arm held the knife at her back, and led her towards the door. The man suddenly stopped and told Elizabeth to put some shoes on. So she grabs her slippers, and he's like, no, get your running shoes. Ooh. Well, he told her at this point, quote, I'm taking you hostage for ransom. Ew. The man took Elizabeth outside, and he grabbed two green bags that were in the weeds, and they headed towards the road that goes up the mountain. Headlights were shining from a vehicle that made its way up the mountain road, and it was a cop car. What? Yeah, that's how close they came to a cop. But nobody knew this had happened Right, yet. right. Well, it's the middle of the night, yeah. Right, right. The man shoved Elizabeth behind some bushes and then threatened her so that she'd stay quiet. Once the cop passed them, they continued their long trek up the mountain. and. I just like seriously, can you imagine, first off, something so awful about being taken in the middle of the night and now you're climbing up a mountain? After you just got like you were like in a dead sleep and you get woken up to that and you're probably dazed as hell still. Like, like how yeah, confusing. I can't imagine. For a long time, Elizabeth could only see the outline of the man's body because it was so dark out, and eventually she realized she had seen him before. This was the man that her mother had given money to when they were out shopping. Her mother had also given him their phone number so that they could help him more, and he was hired to do some handiwork around the house. Yup. She pleaded with the man and told him she knew her family would pay whatever he wanted to get her back, and he said his wife was waiting for them at the top of the mountain. And I just hate the, like... All they're trying to do is help the dude, and he's just like, I'm going to fuck everything up because right. I'm a piece of shit. Well, and I'm such an advocate for, like, giving people a second chance. Same. And, you know, people that have been in jail, they need help, too, as yeah. soon as they get out. So it really sucks. And I mean, sucks. I, I absolutely donate to people on the streets, like, yeah, without hesitation. So... It's just, I, yeah, I hate it so much more that they were, they were trying to help, dude, and he's just absolutely coming in to destroy. Yes. Elizabeth's sister, nine-year-old Mary Catherine, had been sleeping right next to her and woke up during the abduction. She pretended to sleep but saw the man leading Elizabeth out of their bedroom. And honestly, how do you even, like, live with that, being that kid? Like, right. and having to force yourself to pretend to sleep. Because you know that if you don't pretend, there's a chance that you're getting taken, too. Yeah. And she is nine, so I'm so glad she did yeah. that. Yeah. No, me too. Even though the man whispered, Mary Catherine was able to hear him say the words, kill your family. She stayed in bed, frozen with fear for hours. Yeah. But finally gathered the courage to run. 
She grabbed, listen, she grabbed a blanket and threw it over her head. 100% what I would have done. I agree. And darted to her parents' room. Like, it's always safe under a blanket. And I mean, when you really think about it, when you're nine, like, getting up to turn off the light is, like, scary. Like, Yes. I can't imagine Mm -mm. having to overcome that kind of fear at that age to go tell your parents. Absolutely not. Elizabeth points out that over the years, many people have actually questioned how Mary Catherine could have waited so long to go to her parents. Um, She was nine. Right. I don't blame her for a second. No. So she entered her parents' bedroom and said, Elizabeth is gone and she still had a blanket draped over her head when she says this. Oh, my God. Poor kid. I know. And she says, quote, you won't find her. A man came and took her. Oh. So she didn't see that the intruder had a knife, but she did know that he had a weapon and assumed that it was a gun. Right. The girls' parents jumped out of bed and ran to the kitchen and saw the screen that had been cut, so they called for help. As the chaos is unfolding inside the house, none of them knew that Elizabeth was being forced to climb and crawl through the weeds and trees with her abductor. And I can't even imagine, like, the panic that you would feel as a parent having one of your kids walk in and just be like, by the way, my sister's gone. Just, she's gone. Like, there's nothing, you know, you're not going to find her. Like, oh my God, I can't. I can't even try to comprehend the amount of panic and fear. I don't think that my brain can allow me to, you know, even know what that would be like. Yep, yep. So, no. So she's with the abductor, and the man is getting more agitated as time went on. And when the sun began to come up, he realized that Elizabeth was wearing bright red silk pajamas. She stuck out like a sore thumb, so he handed her a gray shirt and had her put this on. So they're hiking. The man suddenly shouts, Hafziba! And a woman's voice called back, Emmanuel? An older woman stepped out of the trees, grabbed Elizabeth, and hugged her. But it wasn't kind. Elizabeth felt like the woman was showing her how strong she was. Like she's dominant. Okay, okay. They were standing in a small camp area with tents and tarps. It was evident that these people had been camping there for a while. The woman led Elizabeth into a large tent, and there was a water basin inside. The woman's real name was not Hepziva. It was actually Wanda. So we'll just use that so it's less confusing. I just... Way more basic than I expected. Yeah. It's so basic. Well, it's just... (laughs) Considering the name you just said, and then all of a sudden you're just like, but her name is Wanda. Like, okay. And, like, we'll go over it more later, too. But I will say that they chose names out of the Bible. Got it. So that's why. Yep, yep. Wanda told Elizabeth she needed to take her clothes off so that she could go bathe her, and Elizabeth got really upset and said no. She told Wanda that she just showered last night. Wanda yells out the tent and says, She showered last night. Is that okay? Like she's asking if that's clean enough for the abductor. So confused right now. Yeah. And a voice responded that it was fine. But... That wasn't good enough for Wanda. She told Elizabeth that she better take her clothes off or she was going to come in the tent and rip them off of her. Oh, no. Once Elizabeth was naked, Wanda had her get in the water basin and then she left so that the abductor could enter. And um, she later finds out that the man's name wasn't Emmanuel. It was Brian David Mitchell. So Brian goes into the tent and sees Elizabeth bawling in the water basin, and he tells her, quote, I seal you to me on this earth, and what is sealed here on earth will be sealed in the afterlife, Uh -uh. and I take you to be my wife. Oh, no fucking way. Before God and his angels as my witnesses. No, no, no. Absolutely the fuck not. So this whole thing is starting off real bad. I am uncomfortable. (laughs) Yes. Just remember. So uncomfortable. Survival story. We got to do this. Elizabeth screams, no. And Brian told her that if she ever pulled a stunt like that again, he was going to duct tape her mouth shut. 
Brian forced Elizabeth into a bed and she was begging him to stop. She tried everything. She said she was a child and she hadn't even started her period yet. Brian actually went and consulted with Wanda outside and tells her what Ele- Elizabeth was saying and asks her if this is okay. What? And Wanda's like, yep, that's okay. This is so weird. So she could have saved Elizabeth, but she gave Brian permission to rape her. It's very creepy that they both have to keep asking. Like, is this okay? Like, if, yeah, yeah. It's a little against our plan. Does that still work? Yeah. Yeah, No, it's really creepy and gross. Mm -hmm. So he unfortunately raped her that very day and multiple times a day over the next nine months. That's horrendous. And he starved, manipulated, and tortured her. Elizabeth remembers feeling disgusting, broken, and felt as if her soul was crushed. How could you fucking not? Right. And she's a little girl. Right. She wondered if her family was looking for her. Would she ever be found? Oh, God. It it breaks my heart that she wondered. And then... Of course they're looking for you. This part makes me feel really sad. She wondered if they would still want her when they found out what Brian did to her. No, 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 no. Nope. Mm-mm. Yeah. We're just, uh-uh. When nope. I was reading her book, I, it just broke my heart when she said that. You just shattered mine, so. <sighs> and she's like, you know, why would they want me? Because I'm different now. Oh, my God, stop it! Elizabeth oh, dude, you're killing me! <laughs> oh! I know, I know, oh. I know. <sighs> okay. Pull it together, Hannah. Pull it together. Okay. So Elizabeth contemplated uh, running away in the middle of the night, but it wasn't possible because Brian wrapped a steel cable around her ankle while she was sleeping. Oh, that's awful. Mm -hmm. She was sinking into a really dark place in her brain. Again, how could you not? (laughs) And it allowed her to believe that death would be better than her current situation. She had a lot of time to herself when she was held captive, and Elizabeth decided to use her faith to help her. She realized that her family had always loved her, no matter what she had done. Yes! Surely they would accept her back, and there was a reason to live and keep fighting. Yes, girl! (laughs) Don't mind me. I'm, like, literally throwing my fists up over here. She is. (laughs) I'm getting too excited. Get it! (laughs) Elizabeth's parents, Ed and Lois, called everyone they knew asking for help on the night of their daughter's abduction. The police arrived at the home at 4.13, and friends and family flooded the home just minutes later. Uh, Unfortunately, the police didn't declare the home a crime scene or block people from coming in. So it was immediately contaminated. Shit. Yes, shit indeed. Over the next few hours, a search party was formed and people were canvassing the neighborhood. Elizabeth's parents and brothers were immediate suspects in the disappearance. What? Disappearance? Yep. Okay. (laughs) Dang it. Were you going to say that there were suspects in the disappearance? Because, of course, they were because they're the closest people. Yeah, it was going to be, which makes sense. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I figured as much. Uh, Okay. I got you. Don't worry. Thank you. (laughs) It didn't take long for this to blow up in the media, and people were coming from all over to join the search efforts. Elizabeth says she spent a lot of time crying at the beginning of being held at the camp. Brian told her she would be his handmaiden, and Wanda would be the mother wife. I don't like that. Uh, It's not good. No. The handmaiden was used for sex. Yeah. And Brian knew how deeply religious Elizabeth was and used Bible quotes against her. That is not fair. No. I mean, not that any of it is, but that, like, that, yeah. And that's kind of why I put that in the beginning of, like, there is a lot of manipulation with religion uh he would say that she's no better than anyone else and the bible says that before you rise above all things you have to descend below them all oh hell so he explained to her like he's doing her a service by teaching her these lessons gross and she had to experience all the evil before she could be worthy of being brian's wife it's fucking disgusting yes he would do uh sex lessons 
Oh my. Oh. Uh, or uh, like uh, demonstrations on Wanda. Uh, and then he made Elizabeth watch. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, then he would, of course, rape Elizabeth afterwards, and he would make her sit naked in the tent all day. <sighs> yeah. And again, I won't go into, like, graphic yep. details, so this yep. is, that's it. After Brian violated Elizabeth, he would tell her she's so lucky, because he brought her out of sin, out of the ugly world. Now, uh, Wanda was actually really jealous of Elizabeth. So it seemed that she enjoyed watching her be tortured. That, wow. Yeah, it gets really, like, I know it's messed up right now, but it gets really weird. Brian renamed Elizabeth Shiar Jashub. Yep. uh, Because he was the first son of Isaiah, and it means a remnant will return. I actually knew. Well, I didn't know what it meant, but I didn't, like know that there was a reasoning behind it. Okay. Elizabeth asked if she could choose her own middle name, and Brian agreed as long as it came from the Bible. So she chose Esther. She just wanted something that was hers. Hers, yeah. And that he hadn't picked for her. Absolutely. He told her that God had purged and cleansed him, and he was commanded to take seven wives. You see, this was all God's plan. This is the worst kind of manipulation. Yep. Seriously. Yep. He says that Elizabeth shouldn't be upset because she's the lucky one. I, um, mm, the amount of rage. Yeah. Someday she would testify to the world with his other wives that he was Emmanuel and he was the chosen one from God. Even though Brian told this to Elizabeth daily, She was smart enough to realize that somebody who's threatening to kill her family couldn't be telling the truth about being a chosen vessel from God. Yep. 100%, dude. Yeah. Many airplanes flew over the camp while Elizabeth was there, and one day she heard somebody calling her name. She believed it was her uncle, but Brian was immediately beside her, making sure she didn't make a sound. Yeah, of course. Like, can you imagine how awful i know that would be because you're so close but you're so far away at the same time yeah and she can hear them but she can't call for help and it's got to be even worse like once you don't hear it anymore because then you just know that that chance is gone yes and brian said if her family found them he was going to kill them the next day helicopters hovered right over the camp but nothing happened and they carried on down the mountainside The camp was really dirty, and Brian had to hike to a spring at the bottom of a canyon just to get water, so they had to ration the water, and they would run out every few days. Oh. Elizabeth came to the conclusion that this group of people would be far more likely to kill her if she was mopey and miserable. So if she wanted to survive, she needed to pretend that she was friends with them. Such an incredibly smart child. Like, seriously, for realizing these things. I yeah. mean, these are things that sometimes, like, adults can't even figure out. Like, mm-hmm. f- just for realizing that alone. And changing incredible. tactics when you're a kid like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so she thought perhaps they would let their guard down and stop tying her up. Maybe she could stop fighting the abuse and work towards gaining the trust of her captors. Yeah. Wanda and Brian actually fought all the time. And it was often about Elizabeth. She would hear them yelling and Wanda would tell him that he's being lustful with Elizabeth because she's young and beautiful and it's just not fair. Well, geez, what did she think was going to happen when he brought a kidnapped child into the relationship? Right. (laughs) After their fights, Brian would remind Wanda that he was God's servant and he would pray over her. Oh, So she had to stay with him because she was part of the plan. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. Keep forgetting about that. Right. When Brian would leave the camp for water, Elizabeth often begged to go with him, but he always said that she just wasn't ready. On one occasion, he finally agreed to let her go and unlock the cable that she was tied to. 
she was overjoyed to finally get out and like move around. Yeah. And she also wanted to leave as many footprints as possible along the way. Oh, that. Wow. Can you believe that she thought that Holy through? Holy crap. Like, I don't think I would have been thinking about footprints I and stuff at definitely that age. Don't, I mean, I guess you have a lot of time to think, but, like, still, that's young to be thinking of that stuff. Yeah. When the group eventually ran out of food rations, Brian was forced to head to, you know, town, and he came back just beaming. He had seen Elizabeth's face on posters all over town, and it made him feel so proud. Oh, Mm-hmm. And he couldn't wait to tell Elizabeth, but it actually gave her a sense of hope. I was going to say, because then she knew how hard they were looking. Yeah. So she's like, if other people are still fighting for me, then I have to keep fighting too. So his plan kind of backfired there. Elizabeth was tethered full time for the first six weeks at camp. Brian made it his mission to make sure that she understood that if she ever got free and tried to leave, he would go back and kill her entire family. And then she would have to deal with it because it's all her fault. That's so sad. And he started going into town a few times a week and always brought alcohol back. And he started forcing Elizabeth to drink it with him. Oh. Now, this is extremely against her religion. And he knew that. Oh, of course. It, of course. Mm -hmm. it, One night, Brian gives Elizabeth a bunch of alcohol does a sexual demonstration with Wanda and says he and Elizabeth are going to do the same thing. When he leaned in to kiss her, she bit his tongue. <gasps> he told her, if you ever do oh, that no. again, I'll never have sex with you again. I mean, just, just let that sink in. I will never rape you again. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, he told her, she would be the most miserable woman in the world. I honestly wonder if this would have created a bigger problem, though. If she hurt him again, would he decide that he didn't need her and just kill her? Right. You know? It, there's, I mean, yeah. So it's like, even though he's dangling that, like, I'll never do this to you again, it's like, okay, well, she wants it to stop, but is he just going to kill her? Exactly, yep. So Elizabeth was not Brian's first attempt at getting an extra wife. Wait, what? Yeah. I did not know that. What? I didn't either. As in, like, he tried to, like, kidnap another person or he was just kind of trying to bring them in He to the relationship. found uh, somebody else. So he found a woman named Kelly and he moved in with her. What? But, yeah. Uh, so... Wanda got, of course, extremely jealous and things blew up. He decided to target somebody younger and that's when he took 14-year-old Elizabeth. So he already knew this chick had jealousy issues. Yes. They, he, and, he, and he still thought this was, was, was going to be a good idea? Yeah. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. I mean, he literally saw it. Well, he he's like, oh, she is jealous that I'm with another woman, so why don't I take a young girl? Ew. Mm hmm I mean, I, I hate that thought process, but I'm just saying, like, if she's jealous with one woman, she's going to be jealous with the next. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Uh, if you have rational thinking skills. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's that's where the problem comes in, huh? <laughs> uh, he realized that she was still too old, though, because Elizabeth fought back too much and she wasn't Jeez. easy to control. Oh, God. So he decided that he wanted to take younger girls for his next wives. Oh, my God. I hate this. Uh, he did find a young girl on a bus and he decided that was going to be his next target. But this girl realized that he was following her. And so what? she. Yeah. So they're on the bus, and she waits until the very last second, and she jumps out the door. As they're pulling away? And he was still on the bus. Dude, that's brilliant! Yeah. I so. wonder I wonder what made her uh, realize that she was being watched. Right. That's, that's like, I wonder if it was just, like, a gut feeling, mm -hmm. or if she happened to notice him elsewhere and notice that he was kind of like, in the same vicinity over and over. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. I wish we knew. <laughs> I do, too, because, like, younger than 14 and you pick up on something like right. that. Right, and that's exactly why I wish that I knew, because... Yeah. Jeez, these young kids are 
freaking smart. smart. Yeah. Elizabeth was never allowed to talk about her family or her previous life, as Brian called it. Uh, he would yell at her if she brought it up. On one occasion, Brian was complaining about how it was really stupid that he wasn't allowed to go see his mom because she got a restraining order against him after he pushed her down a flight of stairs. Wait, his own mom? His own mom. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my God. So he's like, oh, it's so stupid that you don't want to see me, uh, even yeah. though I shoved you down the stairs. Right. How dare you? Uh, okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 that's rough. Yes. Oof. He mentioned where she lived, and Elizabeth was like, oh, I know that neighborhood. My cousin Olivia lives right by there. Oh, God. So Brian allowed her to continue her story. So she talked about all the things they used to do together and goes, Are you freaking me out? You're freaking me out? Mm Mm-hmm. I don't like it. So he says, I've seen that yellow house before. I know where it is. The next day, he wakes up Elizabeth by saying, The Lord commanded him to go get Olivia to be his next wife. I was so scared that's what you were about to say. And I actually never heard this part I didn't either. I didn't know about it. I had no idea. But, I mean, of course she doesn't know to not. No. Talk about her family. I no. Mean, she's just trying to make friends with them right now mm-hmm. so she can get out. And so she's just kind of trying to tell them whatever comes to her mind. Of course, she's not thinking about the fact that he could go get them. Right. Oh. And so he spent time planning things out and decided he would kidnap Olivia on July 24th because it was a state holiday commemorating the day the Mormon pioneers made their way to Salt Lake Valley. Wowza. So there would be like a lot of traffic, parades, fireworks, parties, everything loud. Elizabeth was obviously sick with worry and felt that she had betrayed her cousin and wondered if she would be sent to jail for accidentally helping Brian. Oh, oh no. I know. And she's like super conflicted. Part of her desperately wanted a friend or a family member to Someone be with there her. with her. But... She didn't want anybody else to go through the same pain that she was enduring. But of course, as a kid, why wouldn't you? I mean, even as an adult, you'd want somebody, like, yeah. there mm-hmm. with you. Obviously, you don't want them to go through it, but you're like, God, I wish somebody was just here yeah. with me so I'm not alone all the time. You don't wish it upon them, but boy, if somebody else is going through yeah. that same pain, maybe it's a smidge oh, better. Yeah. She waited all day, and when he returned, uh, he announced that, Olivia was not the one that God wanted after all. Uh, okay. Would you like to know why? I would love to know why. Apparently, Brian entered Olivia's home through the window, just like he did at Elizabeth's. But this time, when he reached inside the window, he knocked something over and it shattered. He waited, and when he did not hear, like, voices or footsteps, he reached in again and knocked something else over. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so this time Sorry. the lights started popping on in the house and somebody started shouting so he got out of there i mean thank goodness yeah i'm glad for olivia yeah like, what a fucking idiot i for knocked real. things over so this definitely isn't the one yeah god told me she's not the one never mind <sighs> holy crap he's so dumb okay mm-hmm. oh boy Uh, Over the years, many people have criticized Elizabeth because she talks about how compliant and obedient she became. And when she was finally let off the tether, a lot of people say she should have just escaped at that point. Um, You don't know what brainwashing is like. Yep. And she was 14. Yep. And he said he was going to kill her family. And again, like, the thing is, is that some people, when you're in this situation, you have to build up trust. So if they release you that first time, you can't dip out the first time. No, you're not going to get another chance. Yeah, you have to keep building up their trust until they leave long enough that you know you can get out. Yeah. So it's like, either way, I mean, she probably would not have gotten out. And who knows, if she would have tried, I mean, they could have killed her. Absolutely. So it's like, there's, there's so many things that could have happened, but brainwashing is so scary and i know everybody always is like oh i could never be brainwashed because you think you can't but you have no fucking idea but i also don't think that there's any reason that we should judge her story yeah because we haven't experienced it or lived it right (laughs) exactly so that's why i wanted to bring it up because i'm like why is everybody criticizing her yeah no 100 percent. and like when you get when you're being brainwashed like that like you literally you it's like you, you you almost 
convince yourself like there's a point where you're not going to be able to leave ever yeah and so of course you're stuck there you can't help it like you i mean people can literally convince people that their names are something different true yeah so it's like it's just like that brainwashing thing like you just have no idea what was going through her head and he already said he shoved his own mother down the stairs what's he gonna do to her right like his family disowned him because he sucks yeah how how dare they right (laughs) yeah (laughs) Um, and so, you know what? What? That's where we're going to end this one. I, damn it, I knew you were going to do that to me. You did. You're not very nice. I'm not. That wasn't <laughs> nice. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's all the things for part one. That's all, yeah, all the things that have made me feel incredibly uncomfortable and pissed off and mm-hmm. sad and all these feelings and feels and I'm done with it. Yep. But part two ends really good. Yay. That's true. So. I mean, <laughs> I know the ending, so. Yeah. <laughs> she survives. Right. Yay. <laughs> so, um, but I, I am excited to hear the rest of it, too. I'm already hearing things I had no idea about. So. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. You've already thrown a couple curveballs at me that I didn't know about, so. Because, like, I, I knew, of course, the Elizabeth Smart, you know, story, like, parts of it. Um, but I had no idea that he was trying to get other wives. I didn't know anything about that. And honestly, I don't think I ever heard prior that he already had a wife, Wanda, with him. Oh, okay. That was yeah, news I didn't to know me that. as well. Okay. I did know that, but that's only because, like I said, I've done some research on it yes. over the years. But, like, um, I, there, you've thrown a few things in there that, I um had absolutely zero clue like the Olivia thing. I did not know that he was going to I'm I knew about the wives but I did not know he was thinking about going and grabbing her cousin. I that no. Nope. I cannot imagine like if he would have been successful with that. No, I know it. How awful it would have been for that family to have another kid gone. Well, and then what if something would have happened to her like yeah, and then yeah, like, yeah. you know Elizabeth could yeah. Well, yeah. Anyways. No, I'm so thankful that they put glass stuff that shatters by their window. Right. <laughs> Yeah, noted. I'll keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Good booby traps there. (laughs) All right. So make sure to follow us on any of our podcast apps. Tell us the stories you want to hear. Go to our website. Leave us a five-star review if you love us. Tell your friends. Tell your cats. Um, Bye. Bye.